The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we are live in chilly Los Angeles. iHeart Radio, Fox Sports Radio, FS1. Joy Taylor is joining me in 15 minutes. Peter Schrager stops by. Uh, Schrager's got the very latest on jobs. We could have multiple jobs solved in the next 24 hours. So Peter Schrager, money man. Mr. Information, Peter Schrager will be joining us from New York where the Jets are going to hire somebody, and I think it's going to be quick. Arizona's going to hire somebody. They may hire, I'm not joking when I say this, there are jobs that could be filled by the end of our show today. So we're going to stay on this stuff. Joy, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm glad we're both wearing blue today. It's bizarre. We've, we've been on a streak of wearing the same thing. We don't yeah. even, that's odd. You know what, it's, a, it's a psychological thing because yeah. we want the viewer to think that we are aligned. But we just kind of get lucky. Yeah. And, we're, and we're blue, the color of the Cowboys, and I want to start this hour with this. This is weird because yesterday I was driving home after the show, and I was thinking about the Cowboys and just thinking about topics in my head. And I, and I have no idea why, but I was, I was thinking about Dak Prescott, and I thought, you know, he's got about 90% of the qualities of Troy Aikman. And, uh, and I'll get to that in a second. But Troy Aikman was talking about him yesterday on the Ticket in Dallas. It's a radio station. And he said, uh, he texted uh, Dak, and he said, first postseason win of many. I really believe that. He's going to be the Cowboy quarterback for a long time. He's going to win a lot of games in January going forward. I think it's certainly possible, especially if uh, Dak Prescott has what I think he has, which is self-awareness, which has always been the most underrated quality of professional athletes. Do you know who you are? Do you know your true talent level? Carmelo Anthony's never had it. Uh, the great ones have it. You know, like, like I think Dak has it. Jay Cutler didn't have it. I think Dak has it. Jeff George didn't have it. I think Dak has it. Cam doesn't have it. I think Dak has it. And so I think Dak's going to win a bunch of games because he has self-awareness and he realizes he's way better off with stars around him than making a few more dollars in Texas without stars around him. But I now we all know that Troy Aikman's a legend in Dallas, right? We all know that. We all understand that. Troy Aikman's an all-timer. We all acknowledge that. And we all mostly acknowledge, unless you're wearing a pom-pom here, you're waving pom-poms, that Dak has limitations. I would argue to you that they have way more in common than you think. Now, the reason Troy won Super Bowls and is in the Hall of Fame, because he's got a world-class arm. And the reason I think Dak's going to win games, will never be in the Hall of Fame, and probably doesn't win a Super Bowl, is he has a pretty average arm. But arm is not everything. There's been a lot of guys in this league, Drew Brees is one, without a cannon, that have won a ton of games. Matt Ryan's won a ton of games. Aaron, but, but, but you don't have to have Aaron, by the way, you don't have, Drew Brees, without a great arm, has won as many Super Bowls and maybe more in about a month than Aaron Rodgers with a great arm. But Troy and Dak share a ton of qualities, and these are the qualities that I think made Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman was tough. He played with concussions. Dak is tough. Uh, both guys are not concerned about being popular in a locker room. They will call out teammates. They will sign. They're business first guys. They don't care if they're popular in the locker room. They don't want to be despised by everybody, but they will take unpopular stands. Dak Prescott on the anthem, that didn't play well in Dallas's locker room. He's like, no, I put my heart on my flag at O'Neal. That did not play well on social media. That did not play well on Twitter. That did not play well in the locker room. And Dak didn't give a rip. And Troy Aikman, you go watch those old NFL films. He will call out teammates. And I mean, he will ride them. He will get in their kitchen. He doesn't care. Winners aren't trying to be popular. Losers are obsessed by it. Uh, they're all th neither great statistically. Troy wasn't great statistically. Troy doesn't measure up to Montana, Marino, and Elway. But both Dak and Aikman, I would argue, were a calming influence late in games. Troy Aikman was in a locker room with a lot of big personalities. Troy was the grown-up. Dak Prescott's been in a locker room with a lot of personalities, including his owner. Dak's the grown-up. Both can take a hit. Both are, I think, situationally great late in games. Troy was great in the fourth quarter. Troy had a lot of picks. Troy threw a lot of picks. Troy didn't throw a lot of picks in playoff games, fourth quarter driving for the win. Dak makes mistakes. Dak, Dak skips a lot of balls. Dak misses a lot of open receivers. He doesn't miss a lot of open receivers in the fourth quarter, four minutes to go, got to beat Seattle with a drive. So now, again, there's a reason Troy's a Hall of Famer and has three Super Bowls. Troy had the golden arm, and Dak does not. But 
they share, a, and I was thinking about this yesterday, driving around. It's, it's remarkable how many qualities I like about both. They are grownups. They are, they're never trying to be popular in the room. The first sign of a loser is somebody that walks into a party and wants everybody to like him. Troy never cared. Troy wanted to win games. Troy wanted to win games. And Dak Prescott, when he did that anthem thing, that did not play well with teammates. That did not play well on social media. Grownups don't care about that crap. Grownups don't sit and worry about Twitter. They got bigger things to do. They go out and they want to win games. And so Dak and Troy have a lot more in common. They're more similar than dissimilar. The difference, obviously, is Aikman's got an all-time top 10 arm. Uh, let me move to this. So the uh, Chargers, a story came out yesterday. I want to credit the person who wrote it. Uh, Jenny Vrentis, she's very good, from the MondayMorningQuarterback.com. Jenny's very good. She gives a, a couple times a year, she pops a big story. Uh, not that she's not always good, but she, she gets mentioned a lot. She's very talented. So uh, she got a quote uh, from a, a Charger that said they knew 60 to 70% of the plays the Ravens were going to run. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, they, they could literally see what was coming. And uh, by the way, Tony Romo had a great breakdown of the difference between Phillip Rivers, a veteran quarterback, and how he manipulates the game. Watch this. And a whistle. Rivers is convinced he got him the jump. This is where a veteran quarterback really makes it difficult. So throughout the game, he lifts his leg. Or all of a sudden, he doesn't snap. He comes up and he changes the protection. And the next time you lift the leg, the ball comes. The problem is when you come out of a break with time, you come in there and you go, hey, it's on three now. Wait for that. Day. I'm not even going to tell you the play. I'm going to fake like we're calling a play. And he got him to jump. Now, Joey, we talked about this yesterday. Fans can't see film study, preparation, and pre-stamp manipulation very often. There you can see it. This is manipulating the defense. And in this instance, it, you could see it as a fan. This is a big deal. This is why Brady and Rivers are still alive in the playoffs. Okay, That's why Breeze is still playing in the playoffs. This is a thing that this is what Andrew Luck does as well as any young quarterback in league history. Here's the thing we found out this weekend about... The Chargers and the Ravens and the Eagles and the Bears showed this. This is a fact. New works in the NFL briefly. The Wildcat worked briefly. Chip Kelly's up-tempo offense, never forget this, 10-6, and 10-6, and six, worked briefly. The Houston Oilers in the 90s ran the run and shoot. Jack Party, the head coach, got him to the playoffs. Tim Tebow got to the playoffs. Lamar Jackson, Mitch Trubisky. When you introduce new schemes and a contrarian way to do business, it works in the NFL. It always has. During the regular season. season. And then the offseason comes and coordinators look at it and they study it. And then the next season, it doesn't work quite as well. And two years later, it's done and it's out of the league. In the end, you got to throw the ball at an elite level. Everybody is looking for the new thing. I get it. It's cool to say, hey, I found this new band. Hey, man, I found this new band. They are the hot new band. But Bon Jovi still makes $100 million a year. Elvis Presley does, too, and he's dead. The old thing generally still works. U2 is still selling out the Rose Bowl. Bon Jovi is still selling out big arenas. I know you love the new garage band, but we're always looking for the new thing. And here's the four qualities that have always won in the NFL at quarterback. Size. It's better to be big than small. Now, there are Fran Tarkenton, Russell Wilson. I'm not saying there's not outliers. Size matters. Ideally, six, three and a half is where you'd like to go. Arm matters. There have been guys like Phillip Rivers, Drew Brees, maybe not a great arm, a weird. But ideally, you'd like to throw the ball like Dan Marino, <laughs> Troy Hickman, Terry Bradshaw, Peyton Manning. You'd like to throw a strong football. Humility matters. You don't think Peyton Manning's Humble. You don't think Tom Brady's humble. You don't think John... Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. They, 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 they know how lucky they are, and they know they need help. John Elway didn't win anything without running back Terrell Davis. you got to have a little humility. I'm not in the cocky guy. And the fourth thing is you got to have a work ethic. Johnny Manziel never had a work ethic. Jamarcus Russell didn't have a work ethic. Size, arm, little humility, and work ethic will always work. And you can win games without them, but when the Chargers know, according to this article, 70% of the plays that are coming, and that's because Baltimore is running largely a college offense and largely a running offense, it can win games. It can win a division. 
Trent Dilfer said it yesterday. It, it historically, it doesn't win Super Bowls, and it doesn't last very long. If you want your college, I mean, listen, running backs get hit so much, they wear down quickly, and they weigh 245 pounds. Quarterback, run around guy, it can work, especially if you're not paying him much. You can load up the defense. But, you know, th- there's a reason a bunch of statues are in the playoffs this weekend. Goff's a statue. Foles a statue. Rivers a statue. Brady's a statue. Eli's got two Super Bowls. He's a statue. Ben doesn't run anymore either. <laughs> you know, most of the old stuff still working in this league. Uh, by the way, uh, Belichick 67. <laughs> Andy Reid's 60. And Sean Payton's 56. And it's, slow down all the new stuff. Some of the old stuff's still pretty good. Uh, coming up next, Peter Schrager, new NFL openings. Uh, uh, they're going to be filled, and they're going to be filled fast because in a lot of instances, 